Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is episode number one of season number two. Never knew if there was going to be a season two or not, but we're here and I'm excited. My name is Keith. I'm here with my good friend, Doug. How are you doing, my friend? We had a nice long break. What'd you do? We did, you know, uh, over the holidays, uh, got really cold, tried to stay warm, had the uh, friends and family uh, things I had to go to. It seems like it's been so long since we've uh, been on here. I'm excited to get back into it. I know we had a nice long break. Uh, you know, we try to post weekly if we can. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the things we're going to talk about today is the show format and some of the interesting things coming up uh, within 2024. And yeah, you're right. It's bitterly cold across the United States, depending on where you are. Uh, I know it is here where we are. And so, yeah, I'm all bundled up. Like I told Doug, I look like a cat burglar. If you're here, listen to audio. I'm wearing a black stocking cap and a black hoodie. Uh, it looks like I'm about to go either rob a bank or sneak into somebody's house and Doug will have to arrest me or something. So uh, if you're not watching on video, you'll see that uh, it's it's earlier in the morning, too. So I'm not fully awake yet. So hopefully it'll be a good good start to our season here. But uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. It was a nice long break. And uh, man, there was a lot of news. Uh, now, we're not going to like go over all of the past news, of course, but we're going to we're going to hit the highlights of the most recent couple weeks uh, and bring it in. So we're just going to dive into it. Let's queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. Yeah, we're going to start off with Rock Band and uh, their all their DLCs. They're ending after eight years and 3000 songs. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I remember the uh, first thing I played kind of like Rock Band was Guitar Hero. Back in 2006, uh, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, I had both of those. I don't know which one I had, but I had two guitars. I thought I was awesome, you know, rocking out in <laughs> my living room. It was pretty yeah. cool. I had both sets, and it was fun. I remember, you know, playing playing on each one of these. They were a time when the rhythm games were really starting to take off. And so, um, I don't know. What I did not expect, <clears throat> sorry, choking up here. Uh, what I did not expect is what's going to replace it. So first of all, when it comes to Guitar Hero, uh, there's talks that there's going to be a re-release. Um, and so they're working on that. With Rock Band, they're actually, inside the article, they talk about how they're replacing it with Fortnite festivals. Now, what that is, uh, Fortnite, Epic Games, who owns Fortnite, has gotten to this thing where they're hosting virtual concerts, and it's wildly popular. And they'll have like some type of big artist. People gather in one central location and listen to these artists. Um, and it's within the the Fortnite world. Well, they also have a light version of Rock Band. Basically, it's the rhythm game inside the game itself. So you go to this music festival. You and four friends can actually do the Rock Band rhythm game within Fortnite. So that's what's going to replace um, all these DLC. They're just going to continue the brand, but do it through Fortnite itself. So. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. My nephews all play Fortnite, and I know they've uh, attended some of these concerts. I know mm -hmm. they've attended dance parties. So, oh yeah, it's a very social game. You know, I go way back, and hopefully, it's not controversial. But to days of uh, Club Penguin, I think it's called. I don't know if I. But did I'm that going one. way back there. What was that? Uh, so it was a online forum. You're all little penguins, and you. Uh, Go around talking to each other and stuff. What year is this? Uh, way back. Oh, I'm searching right now. I'm on started. here. Is this oh, it? Okay. Free to play, massive multiplayer uh -huh. online MMO. Is this it? So it started. I got it. It started in 2005. So it was kind of one of the first kind of chat room. Plus, you have a character walking around. You can customize your penguin and stuff. That's what I remember. It says it was Walt Disney Company. Yeah. What? Oh. Let's see. See, Doug, you're you're, uh, <clears throat> you're a little younger than me, so you know yeah, these cool you know. things. Yeah, apparently it still exists uh, in some form. <laughs> so that's my first, uh, not really similar, but just a lot of people Social. getting together to do a group activity online. Yeah, okay. That's cool. That's cool. Well, it's awesome that the uh, reference or not, but there you go. Well, no, I think it links because it's doing uncommon things, you know, within the MMOs themselves. So, but yeah, I, I think it's awesome that at least they're trying to continue on with the rock band stuff in some form. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Now the next one I'm pretty excited about, uh, as you know, in 2023, it seemed like, uh, we had lots of AI 
that ain't going to change in 2024. In fact, we'll probably have even more. (laughs) I know we have some big ones in here. Uh, So NVIDIA had announced a new plugin type tool for developers uh, called Ace. Now, it does a lot of things, but the part that we want to focus on is uh, how it impacts non-player characters, NPCs. So a demo was done um, with NVIDIA Ace, and they essentially, kind of like what Doug and I were saying last year, Uh, It's a tool that allows developers to quickly inject uh, large language models or something like chat GPT into characters that already exist. Um, And in the demo that they showcase, uh, they took, I believe it was uh, cyberpunk and you're walking into a bar playing the the video here. uh, And essentially you're talking to these characters. What's crazy is you're using your voice. There's no like select menu where you select options. You walk up to them and you say, hey, so-and-so, how's it going? And they respond back. And they're like, they'll even say, I have a job for you. And then you can turn to the chef and be like, oh, did you hear that? She has a job for us. And then he'll be like, oh, well, then, you know, it's on the house or I'll I'll make the I'll, I'll, I'll make my best dish. And the cool thing is they remember what you tell them, almost like people. And and again, I need to emphasize the guy is just talking to these characters he's not like clicking on a select uh preset story branching options it is a true conversation that he's having with these avatars and they remember and they bring things up and each time he played a different playthrough they would say something different each time so it was the replayability of something so i think the idea is to fast track being able to give these worlds more in-depth uh feel to them the characters will seem more real I don't know, man. There's a lot of people. I do kind of worry about this. I think it'll make games awesome, but people, I don't, I don't know how to say this without sounding negative. People are kind of dumb sometimes. I see people like thinking these are real people and falling in love with them or getting convinced that they are uh, actual real. I mean, don't you kind of worry about like people's perceptions of this? And I don't know, man. Where do you think this is going? Would you? What do you think about it? I think it's exciting, but scary too. <laughs> so, what's your thoughts? Well, I- I am in agreement with you. You know, we hear about sentient AI, you know, the Terminator movies, all those things. This is getting pretty close. I mean, you're taking a totally artificial being or person or thing and uh, making them sentient or aware. But on the other hand, I think it'll make your gameplay that much better. Well, you're uh, making them, you're making them seemingly aware um well just yeah. you know it still has a lot of controls on it being stuck in a video game i think it'd it be does. great for the player because then you can have such fast and uh interesting conversations but then i look at it as if i make that npc mad he's gonna remember it like a couple <laughs> chapters or level ups later it might make it more interesting maybe consequences yeah. will have a different take you know so yeah I, and it is i mean and it's important to note that these ais they're they're essentially really good at pattern recognition and they get trained on all these different patterns. So it fools people. People think they're actually um, conscience, but they're not. They're not conscious. I want to be very clear about that. We haven't achieved that yet, but I think it'll fool people enough to where they think that they are. Um, so, yeah, this that's. Is, uh, yeah, this is just one step closer to the Oasis, and I'm very excited <laughs> to the Oasis. That's hilarious. All right, man, this is exciting. We'll see where this is going to come. Uh, I wonder how many games are going to retrofit with NPCs to do this, but I think it'll also make developer tools a lot easier uh, for things oh, that definitely. are in development yeah. now. So, Well, then you don't have to spend so much time on select dialogue, and you can just kind of let them roll with it. But I think they're going to have to put some uh, stuff in there to keep you on track of your mission, and that way you're just not talking for hours about recipes or something. Oh, I completely agree. Well, some people may just want to do that, you know? Well, yeah. So, yeah. all right, man. Well, let's continue the the AI run here. So one of the other announcements that was made was something called the Rabbit or the R1. Now, this is a unique device that essentially is looking to disrupt phones. And there's a good 25-minute presentation uh, by the CEO of the, the company, and they point out how smartphones with an operating system and mobile apps is is really old and and if you want to do something it, ai doesn't really it doesn't it has a 
it does a good job understanding you, but it doesn't do a good job carrying out actions. So they're implementing what's called a large action model, a LAM. So we have large language models, which understand your intent and can have a conversation with you. Large action model uh, takes and put things into action. So in the demo, this little device that you hold, it's got a little screen on it. You hold a button down, kind of like when you're talking to Siri or Alexa or any of those, uh, except it can actually do things. So if you talk to it and you tell it, you say, hey, uh, I would like to book a trip to London. Uh, I want first class uh, and I want you to make me an itinerary. Can you go ahead and book the tickets for me? Find me a good hotel and make an itinerary. It will actually go out. It has a partnership with all of the services, uh, whether it's airlines and bookings, and it'll just go do it for you. Um, now, the cool thing about it is from a security standpoint, um, it's using those companies' logins. So you got to get on your computer and you first have to give it permissions for your logins. And it is, it's not impersonating anybody. So it's very secure. You're, it's just like you sitting down to go to Expedia and, and click the button to buy the, the ticket for the plane, but it's doing it for you. Uh, so it's essentially taking chat GPT and actionizing it so that now when you ask it a question, you can then say, okay, can you just go ahead and do that for me? And they did this really cool thing with an Excel spreadsheet even. It's got a camera on it. And he pointed it at the Excel spreadsheet. And he said, hey, can you add me a column that does this? And it just, without touching his keyboard, it did it. Uh, he pointed great. it at his uh, refrigerator. Said, these are all the things I have on hand. Can you tell me a recipe to make? And just by looking in the fridge to the camera, it understood. And it's like, hey, yeah, make an omelet. And this is, here's the ingredients. Here's how you do it. So it's much deeper than what we've seen so far. And now there's other devices like this. There's another one that's kind of like an, a lapel, you know, but it doesn't have a screen on it that we've seen. This one seems like it has a lot of potential uh, for being the next level of taking AI to that next step. So don't know about cost or any of those kinds of things, but uh, this thing was fascinating. So what are your thoughts, man? Would you get one of these? I think I would actually like to try it. I mean, I'm looking at the uh, price, uh, one ninety nine. It's oh, you found it. Thank very you. Very affordable. Uh, one ninety nine. For... Is there a subscription? It has cellular. Yeah, I, could... I will drop the link in chat so you can throw Please it up for us. Do. But it is uh, one ninety nine, and it does a lot. And that's crazy. Twenty four is challenging my use of a web browser. Hey, there you go. No worries. We're all rusty here. Oh, yeah. oh my so, yeah, goodness! Yeah, scrolling down. This, I mean. Uh, possibilities look endless uh, the more they push out some updates and advancements if you wow. scroll down on the page there on the functionalities okay. it okay. kind of says uh, what they're planning what they're doing what's exploratory right now oh wow right here so so there's just all okay. kinds of stuff so search music ride share food you know all that is right now it's they're optimal and they're running great uh, mm -hmm. They're looking at doing some travel, AI enhanced communication, note taking, and then the they stuff did, in the uh, future looks great. They did showcase that experimental, that which is it says web teach mode. Now, what that is is you go to a website, a portal, and you can teach it to do things. What you're doing is it's kind of like a macro. You're essentially teaching it the clicks. So, in the in the example, of the like, if you go out to Spotify. Well, no, no. It, what it was is, oh, it was uh, having MidJourney create uh, an AI image. It doesn't know how to do that, right? So what he did was he went to a web page and he said, all right, I'm going to teach you something. And it basically records your clicks. And he launched Discord. He uh, enabled the MidJourney module add-on. And then he typed in, make me an image of you know a puppy dog, boo, 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 boo. And then he modified it. And he said, okay, you're going to do all these steps, except you're just going to modify and set up puppy dog, whatever I say. And he just, it was cake. He didn't in just a little bit of time and it learned. So then when he grabbed the device and said, Hey, go make me an image, blah, blah, blah. It actually did what he showed it to do. So you can teach it new actions. Yeah. I, it's just, that's crazy. Imagine that with work, all the mundane tasks oh. that you have to fill out, like timesheets and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, like, hey, just fill out my timesheet for me. <laughs> Well, I look at the uh, opportunity down here where you're at language. So think about the United Nations. Oh, They're yes. all wearing the headsets and stuff. Yep. If each of them have one of these Real devices time. that automatically transfers, I mean, um, this would be great. You know, in law enforcement, we have a, a large Spanish community in my area. Yep. So learning to uh, – Oh, I didn't even think about learning, that. 
speaking Spanish immediately to help them and take care of them it would be great. Yeah, the military that'd be awesome. You know. Yep, I think that's that's great. I, I don't see anything about like a subscription. It has to be. I mean, the device is two hundred bucks. I believe I was told no subscription needed, but I could be wrong. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> I believe <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, at the very top, scroll all the way up. Okay. Thank you. I didn't go to this site. I should have. No subscription uh, required. Uh, the their fifth required. batch sold out. So you got to wonder how many batches are. They've already sold five whole batches at one ninety nine. That oh price point is uh, so cheap. Like wow. For everything that this thing could do. I'm sorry. That's like a uh, Raspberry Pi level disruption, oh, abs- right? Yeah. The Raspberry Pi is a small pocket computer that's like the size of a deck of cards, and it's so disruptive because it's so cheap. Whoa. That's like putting chat GPT like on. And yeah, it's another device you got to carry, but it's so small. Dang, dude. Man. And I would think that I want uh, one. <laughs> my thought is some company will come out with a clip for your shirt. Oh, a clip for your clothing. Can you imagine you the accessories? Right on there? Oh, my oh gosh, yeah. Shit. And it plays music. Uh, like you tell it to play, it'll play music. The screen's really not a bad screen. Uh, it's got like, it'll, like when you ask what actor was in this movie, it showed a picture of the actor, full, beautiful color screen. The camera's a 360 rotational camera, so it can spin around. So uh, I'm throwing this out there. Trademark it. It's my idea first. Uh oh. This needs to be on a cop's uniform and it um, automatically scans someone's face and checks them for a warrant. Privacy. People are going to be not mad be awesome? at you. That is awesome, but uh, people are going to be mad at you. Well, right. I mean, you're in public view. That's a whole other conversation. Never mind. How about you start with, as you walk up on a vehicle, it sees the license plate. It can check if whether or not its yeah. plates are valid. Well, Let's we start have LPRs there. for that already, though. You do, but couldn't this be done probably a little faster? I don't know how fast LPRs are. It probably are. could, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's just, just awesome. my cop brain working. Sorry. I I'll do like the, to, uh... I like what you said about language, though. If you pull somebody over who doesn't speak uh, the language, uh, oh, traveling. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Dude, I think I want one. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, so it, I've, uh, Dang it. Yeah. I've uh, dealt with a lot of foreign speaking individuals who with uh, broken English, uh, uh, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, a lot of truck drivers are foreign uh, nationals that are over here working you know, trying Mm -hmm. to provide for the family. It's good money, too. But it's very hard to speak to them. Yeah. And the the nice thing about it is it it helps break down that barrier so that you can help them if they need help, you know, those kinds of things. And so... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because it's kind of... It's clunky. When I've traveled overseas with a phone, Google Translate does actually a very good job, but it's clunky because I have to say it. I have to wait for it to translate. Then I have to show them or hit play for them to hear. Then they have to speak into it. It's just not... I don't know. It's not fluid. This is closer to hopefully like a universal translator like we had on yeah. Star Trek. <laughs> so. When you say that about Google, I think with their uh, barred AI, they're getting ready to replace their uh, Google Assistant with. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should fa- speed it up tremendously, I would think. And that was one thing they said in the keynote about this is that the way that they're, they've trained their model for chat GPT or whatever they're using within this, they said uh, most responses at least for inquiries for search are like um, 500 milliseconds or less. They said it's like three to four times faster than if you go to Bard oh. or chat GPT for your searching. So. Well, you got to think that this is their first iteration of this. Uh, yeah. It must already be amazing. So their second, third, fourth generation device is going to be just that much better. Yeah. It's got its own custom OS called rabbit OS and that's what allows it to learn. Uh, that's the other thing about it. So, all right, man. Wow. You blew my mind with that price point. I did not research that. I'm yeah, glad you found that. So. No subscription needed, mm. and it does so much. That's awesome. That's so cool. All right. Let's keep on clicking down the way here. You added this one. I'll let you run with it. I, I saw this, and it really surprised me. I think it's kind of cool in a way. Yeah, I saw this. Uh, so I watch a uh, YouTuber called Mr. Mobile. He does uh, tech reviews. He goes to all the CES tech con- uh, conventions and stuff. He actually came out with this device along with the the company. It's a Clicks. It's a BlackBerry style iPhone keyboard. You know, back in the day, I never had a BlackBerry. I don't know if you did, but oh, I, I did. did have a uh, Windows uh, phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you probably know the edition, but it was a Windows. Uh, phone. They were just Windows phones. Nokia made yeah. them. They were just called Windows phones. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know if they had a name, but yeah. So I had a full keyboard. I had the little antenna. I actually had a Palm 
Rio or something. Mm-hmm. Palm Full Palm keyboard OS. is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, Steve Jobs said it perfectly. Uh, the best pointer is your finger on his first keynote back on that original iPhone. So it's interesting that we're going back to this. I know it's not an iPhone thing. I'm just trying to make an example. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. A lot of people like the tactile keyboards, you know, not not the on-screen keyboards. And that's really what this does. It gives you the the physical buttons that you had on a BlackBerry. You just click your phone into it. It's like a case. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of niche, but I think it's cool. Yeah. People really like tactile keyboards. I think it's a cool little device. It's kind of neat. So it's out for iPhones only at the moment. I know they're mm-hmm. working on Android. Price point yeah. for the iPhone 14 is 139 they're going to come out with that 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max for 159 You know, I, uh, as we heard in previous episodes, I had a 15 Pro Max on order. That thing is huge. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine putting It'll make a it longer. keyboard on the bottom of it. It's going to be ginormous. Yeah. So unless about- you take that off and put it on, I think it's a great idea at the office or at your desk or at home. But uh, keeping it on all the time, you're going to have to get some uh jinko jean style that's what i was gonna say i wonder about putting it in your pocket because that would be kind of annoying it's gotta stick out completely because my phone is uh bottom of pocket to top of pocket already well i know i'm probably hung up on it from the last thing we just talked about but come on man 159 and 139 you can almost go get yourself one of them ai uh oh absolutely (laughs) for 200 bucks (laughs) well and i'd say that most of the keyboards on android i don't know about iphone if you have a choice but Android lets you download different keyboards that do different things. Emojis, you can do that on all that stuff. You can do that on iPhone. So as well. I have a Google keyboard and I have mm-hmm. Swift Key by Microsoft, mm-hmm. and I kind of switch in between them, and they do such amazing things. So I couldn't imagine. I, I'm just not about going back to an old analog style. Uh, yeah, this is very niche. The nostalgia this is, is there for sure. Yeah, somebody. This is just very niche. Like somebody who's just this is a certain market. It's not going to be for everybody. Yeah. But you know what? varieties to spice of life i'm glad they at least have the option well and i've been gifted with the uh larger boy sausage fingers and those look like <laughs> tiny little keys there that is true that is true so. all right well you're on a roll here so uh you added these next ones i'm gonna have you keep on rolling man. i'll say for my fans uh and all the people listening hopefully i'm wide awake and conscious and it's gonna be a great year so it will be all right brother keep on rolling here yeah, the next one, uh, I saw the uh, keynote. You know, uh, Samsung released a new phone. They release new phones every year. This time it's the 24 series. But they also released a smart ring. And I had to go out and find out what a smart ring was. So I found a really good article on Android Police. They talk about smartphone, or sorry, smart rings being uh, fitness trackers mostly. But there's plans to make them do other things. They said, uh, you know, you have, uh, if you've ever been in a hospital or watch uh, TV or anything, they put those O2 sensors on the end of your fingers. Well, I guess that's the most accurate pr- place to read O2 and heartbeat and all that. So that's the concept of a smart ring. Yeah. They've had a few of and them I, before, by yeah. the way. So this isn't new, but they've never taken off like watches have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting I'd say that this Samsung's is the biggest screening. company trying to push it. It is. So if I far. switch over here to Samsung Smart Ring, might signal the start of a new wearable era. Samsung offered new details about the Galaxy Ring, uh, but it's more proof that 2024 is shaping up to be a year of Aura Ring competitors. Now, Aura is the dominant uh, wearable ring up to this point. That's why they're calling that out in the article. Yeah, and I've never had experience with the, the Aura Rings or the Smart Ring. You know, it just came out, but... Or has been in the game for a minute. Um, fitness, stress. I probably need one for stress. But uh, sleep tracking, sleep That's and you. health. So mm-hmm. I have a Galaxy. Nope. I have a, a Pixel Watch that does some of that with me since they partnered with Fitbit. So it does mm-hmm. really well. Yeah, it's definitely it's an interesting take. I'm I'm curious as to why Samsung's deciding to get into it now, especially with the R ring didn't take off. You yeah. know, quite now to me, if you look on the, you can't really see it very well. There's these little bumps on the inside, and the R rings the same way. Those are the sensors. To me, I wonder if that would like bother me if you don't get the fit right, you know? Yeah, I wonder if they kind of retract or they are pretty rigid and raise it off of your skin. I don't know. 
it almost has to. But yeah, sleep tracking, uh, walking. I guess the idea is that if you don't want to do a watch, if you don't want to rely on your phone, it's a lot smaller. It's an interesting concept. I, I'm going to go back to, I just don't know about the yeah. market for this. I mean, now maybe, you know, hey, you get into a hospital, instead of them hooking up too much machines, they put a ring on you. That'd be kind of interesting. Now, that would be uh, very interesting, yeah. And right. they can do some wireless data transfer with the uh, stuff in the hospital. I know they have some wireless uh, O2 sensors already. I've been in the hospital for a checkup. Not a hospital, doctor's office, but they yeah. already have wireless O2 monitors. So I don't know. Maybe that's something. Maybe there's a market that we're just not seeing with it. But So, yeah, man, yep. that's interesting. Um, let's go ahead and our last one here. Your friends. At Samsung, yeah. they're doing it again. So, uh, finishing out the AI conversation, Galaxy had a pretty good keynote. They are going to try their own. So, Apple is kind of working on their AI. Google has Bard. Uh, Microsoft has ChatGPT. Now, uh, Samsung has Galaxy AI. And kind of scrolling down, looking at it, not to say that Google's already done it, but the search to a uh, circle to search you know you have a picture you circle something to me that's google lens because you can highlight what you want to look at uh live translate uh you can take a picture of something and it translates it that's cool so not that they're kind of late to the game but that's what i'm gonna call out to them is that they're kind of late to the game but maybe they have some engineers programmers people behind the scenes that'll make it better than google or give Google some competition to make their process, et cetera. Yeah, I think a lot of these things are already out there, right? Yep. The translate, um, finding the right words faster, grammar checking. Um, it's like summarizing notes or note assist. Uh, it says it can take a long uh, note and it can basically summarize it for you. Like a lot of these things you can do with ChatGPT. What you see now is like they're trying, a lot of these companies are trying to take what you can do on these large learning models and make it faster or readily accessible. Um, and that's kind of what I see. So it's almost like they're just, they're iterating, they're improving on it, which really fascinating to me where I say, I do think um, Android is, is ahead of Apple is on the phone stuff. You and I've done a comparative analysis with um, Google photos. And there's been a feature for a while where you can remove something out of the photo. Your Android does it so much better than yeah. my Apple does. I actually made Apple a does. Christmas card one year. Mm -hmm. I uh, cut my mother-in-law out of a photo. Sorry. Oh, wow. But, Take uh, that. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> my wife thinks it's funny. But yeah, we, my wife and I had a great photo. Not that my mother-in-law didn't need to be in it, but we thought this would be a great Christmas card, so we cut her out of it. And it looked like it was just me and her in the photo. Yeah. It does a really good job. On your phone, when I played with it, uh, it does really well. Now they have a yes. version of Google has a version of it for iOS, but when I tried it, like when I remove something, it smudges up the background, but your phone didn't. Yep. So I'm sure there's something proprietary with uh, Android and how yep. it works better with it. Um, now I know there's other tools that. on Apple, but yep. it, I don't think it does as well as what I've seen on Android. That's just my opinion. Well, if you listen and I'm not as technical as I need to be, but if you listen about the Tensor G3 chip, in the new Pixel 8 Pros, uh, there's a lot of AI and a lot of cores built into it to kind of do those back-end processes. Taking a photo now, I think it's amazing. There's a normal mode and then a portrait mode. That portrait mode takes a little extra time and makes it so detailed. You know, yeah. I take pictures of my cats and dog all the time and just... I see freckles I can't even see in real life. You know, it's crazy. It's funny. Some photographers are stepping back away from DSLRs and they're just using phones. You know, I mean, it's getting to that oh, point. I mean, I can't zoom really, but I would put my phone. I mean, I'm an amateur, but put my phone up against another like a actual DLS, DSLR camera. Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty impressive what they're doing with this. So, so yeah, man. So I, I, I can already tell, you know, that that wraps up our, our new segment. I can already tell uh, we're it's in for probably a year of AI. Actually, I think it's going to be more. That's what it yeah. seems like. I think it's going to be even even more AI. Uh, so ex exciting stuff. But let's go ahead and pivot to our main topic here. So, you know, we had mentioned before we have our our traditional format, and uh, with our traditional format is you know nerd news, and then we always have a central topic. Uh, we are going to keep that 
Uh, but you know, Doug and I were talking about, it. we wanted to diversify, you know, variety is the spice of life. We did do some testing, uh, last year with some shows and we're going to do the same thing because they, we feel like they did really well. And plus we had fun with it. Uh, so some of the things that we're going to do outside of our traditional normal format, uh, is going to be, uh, of course, going to Kansas city comic-con. My, my big question to you, Doug, is are you actually going to buy something this year? Um, uh, I believe I am. Uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, but there is a new area of nerdom that uh, I am going to enter this year, and I'm super duper excited. We'll, you know, so. we'll talk about that in a minute. You're, you're, you see, he's so excited. Uh, he's I'm just, trying not to give spoilers away. He's so. jumping ahead here. Well, before we do that, let's talk about Comic Con. So, are you going to buy something at Comic Con? That was my question. You didn't like. Yeah, well, you so, did buy. You bought one thing last year, but you were. I think you were so overwhelmed. It was your first Comic Con. I was overwhelmed. So now I've got a kind of concept of it's amazing. And I'm going to go on there this year with, yep, yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, yes, I already have my my uh, mind set on something that I want. Oh, you're not going to reveal we'll it, are you? No, no, no. I'll reveal it once we have that episode. Sorry, folks. Well, we go to the one in Kansas City. Uh, it's a, a really good one. And you look at, I've got sharing right now, the guest list. And this, oh, my gosh. They got John Barenthal, who played the Punisher. He was uh, also, of course, Walking on Dead. The Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, he's a great actor. Really enjoy him. Uh, uh, Paul Bettany, who is, of course, uh, you know, uh, he's been in so many things. Uh, Marvel's Avengers. Yeah. Uh, you just, yeah, he's he's a big deal. Uh, then we keep on, I'm just kind of scrolling through the ones that, uh, would be most recognizable. Um, Sophia Butella. Now she's on the rebel moon. I haven't watched that yet. Uh, but it's on Netflix. And, uh, of course she was in one of the John wicks. She's the lady that has like, uh, I think she had like, I don't know if it was John. Wick. She, she played the, uh, the Kingsman, the mummy, I believe it was. Yeah. She played in the mummy, but she was on the Kingsman. And I think she had like, <laughs> it was so dumb. Uh, she had oh, razor yes. blades for legs. <laughs> Something yeah, so like, prosthetic uh, laser, yeah. or not laser, but yeah, sword uh, legs. Yeah. Exactly, it was it was over the top uh, by far. Um, oh my gosh, now, Keith David, a big one on there. Uh, there's quite a few actually. I love Keith David. Uh, uh, deep, deep voice. He was gargoyles. He also was Halo uh, voice inside of uh, uh, the the one of the commanders inside of Halo. Uh, we're just kind of running down the list here real quick. What, which what, what's some of the ones that stand out to you? Uh well uh Palpatine right oh, that's right uh the Emperor the Palpatine the I haven't gotten to it there. too was he yeah. at the very top he was yep here we go I'll just do it by uh summary here here we go oh Kinda... well, it's on the top for me but that's okay so uh, you probably on a different page uh, yes yeah Return of the Jedi Star Wars he's in Sleepy there Hollow there he is Ian yeah. McDermott. And then right beside him, Matthew Lillard. I think he's oh, God, great. He's great. 13 um, Ghosts, Scooby-Doo, Scream. Yeah. Dude. Such great. Five Nights actor. at Freddy's? I didn't even know he's in there. Big nerd. Super nerd. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, he's great. That's all. They've got a a pretty a really good, good collection this year, yeah. They really do. Now, we'll see how many of them hold out. Oftentimes, last minute, uh, people, yeah. you know, bow out. Adam Savage. Dude. Uh, remember... Uh, Mythbusters, but he just did that big long uh, video where he created a Starfield model. Remember, yeah. uh, a partnership oh, the, with Bethesda. The first ship you get, in yep, the game, Frontier. Yeah. Yep, Frontier. Ron yeah. Perlman, Hellboy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. There's I loved some... him in Sons of Anarchy. It was great. Yeah, there's there's some really good ones. I mean, they got astronauts. So they're like they're doing really good. Oh my gosh, Henry Winkler. Oh, we just Henry finished Winkler. up Barry, by the way. And uh, he was huge in that. Wow. So we'll see how many of these they actually keep. But uh, they've got a good, they got a good deck. You can tell by the quality of the the card here that they're definitely rebounding back from uh, COVID. You know, because it was kind of light yeah. when we first went, just because there's that trepidation of crowds. So absolutely. Nev Campbell, Scream, Wild Things, The Craft. Dude, there's just so no. many things. But I can't guarantee that it'll happen, but I do have, if you're on video, this Pip Boy, and I could do a cosplay this year. Oh, you could. Oh, boy. This ought to be interesting. Yeah. We can get a game of Vault suit. That's what we need to do. <laughs> uh, I think you should totally do it. 
Hopefully it's warmer this year than it was last uh, year. Sometimes it rains. I mean, you just you just never know. Yeah. So we're going to try to cover this. As usual, we always have a good time, uh, get a little more in depth. And then, of course, uh, we also typically, yearly, uh, have been working the uh, Columbia Como Retro Game Con, in which we work a booth there with my brother, Brian. So we'll be doing that again this year. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, shapes up. That looks like that's going to be in April. Um you know, and those are things that we did last year. Now, let's get in and talk a little bit about some of the the shakeups. Now, when we first started the uh, podcast, we actually got a lot of feedback. People are like, hey, you guys should stream video games and play video games. We got like so many suggestions. And think about that. We're not opposed to it. It's just being a podcast. You don't necessarily want to listen to somebody playing a video game. Now, yeah. one thing we talked about is maybe just posting that on YouTube and on Spotify because you can watch it. Maybe. Don't know if we're going to do that or not. But it did get us thinking about different show formats. Uh, so one of the things we thought about doing was uh, so some of the things that tested well was things like with the Steam Deck and modding and things of that sort. Uh, so, you know, we could go ahead and, um, you know, do something like a show and tell, like a, like a how-to video. Um, we talked about, you know, how to mod your uh, PlayStation 5 to increase the storage, you know, some helpful videos, right? So we thought about doing that. That's one of the other formats that we may dabble into. And obviously interviews, uh, we're going to try. We, we had some that we couldn't get to last year that we're going to try to get to this year. And interviews always test really, really well. Maybe we'll have some people back, expanded conversations. Uh, I know that we had Alex Bond on to talk about Star Citizen, but he's a cybersecurity hacker guy. So that could be interesting. And then Doug, because you're itching to talk about it, we've been working on something for a couple of weeks now. And we don't, I'm just, here's a disclaimer before Doug gets into it. We don't know if it's going to be good or not, right? But it's going to be a, it's going to be a special thing. We're going to at least try. Um, and uh, so I just want to be clear. It's more of a trial run and see how it goes. And then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But we put a lot of work into this. So Doug, yeah. go ahead, dive in, man. I know you're itching. So I'll uh, start with st starting our friendship, starting this podcast. My level of nerddom has gained uh, so much XP, so much. Uh, <laughs> He's leveled up his level nerddom. Up. <laughs> yeah. So I have become a, a uber nerd in the last two or three years. It's been great. So our newest adventure possibly is D&D. &D. For those that don't know, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, if you're completely unfamiliar with it, uh, Stranger Things, they play a version of D&D. &D. That's kind of the most pop culture reference that I can think of right now. Um, I've always heard about d and I've never been opposed to it, but I've never had friends that played it. Now that I'm in this great uh, circle of friends here, I have people that have played it, know how to run it. I believe, Keith, uh, you have been a DM or dungeon master that kind of runs the games, uh, challenges all the questions uh, answers all the uh, things that we need to be answered so i'm super excited about it a very long time ago yeah so i had friends that were heavily into D D, and uh for those that don't know like uh, as a hobby my i love i love writing and i love storytelling uh, even though my career vocation is more like into the technical space uh you know i always did theater and i always did a lot of creative stuff um, and it was uh, a fun outlet where I enjoyed DMing because you're actually telling the story more than I actually did playing. Now, I would do that because oftentimes I had friends of mine that played. They didn't like DMing because they just they didn't enjoy it. I did. I liked it better than being a player. So uh, while I didn't play a lot, I DMed a lot. Um, and the, the the downside of it to me was it was very cumbersome pen and paper, you know, being able to like write everything down. And that, that's kind of turned me off because I wasn't big on I just don't want to do math, <laughs> that kind of a thing. Uh, but. Times have changed. And so part of it is that we've been doing a lot of research about, you know, what's a unique way to do this? Now, Doug, you've been consuming uh, a lot of videos on YouTube. Oh, Obviously, yes. if you don't know the culture, and we're just learning this ourselves, it's, it's a thing right now to watch people play D&D &D, uh, yeah. on YouTube. Like, they're long episodes, right? Like, how many, uh, how long are they? Yeah. Like, three hours or um, more? The longest one I've seen is a three-hour campaign, but uh, usually an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really good. It uh, tackles one little campaign or one little outing with your group or your clan or your fellowship. Yep. And so it's kind of popular, but we wanted to put a different spin on it. Like, 
typically when you watch those videos, they're very entertaining, but they're people that have played most of their life. They're very seasoned. So you have the added element. It was even a year ago. It was last year before any of this came up. Doug said to me, you know, I've always wanted to get in to try. He said that to me. He's like, I want to try D&D. Have you done it? And we had a conversation about it. And I was like, well, my son's played. I did back in the 90s, a million years ago, uh, as you know, but we didn't take it very far. But what's different about this is not only am I obviously very rusty as a DM, uh, but Doug's never played before. We have a friend of our name, Joe. It was his idea to even put it on the podcast. Joe's uber nerd, right? He's a great guy. He's one of us. Yeah. Uh, and then his idea was to introduce two friends who I would not say they're nerds at all. In fact, they make fun of us for being nerdy, I would dare say. But the yeah. angle that we're going to take is we're going to try and play this with people who've never done it before. And it could go off the rails <laughs> or it could be awesome. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the angle is that we're not, you go on YouTube, you have all these like Uber D and D nerds. We're actually going to have a newbie campaign, like where we're all new to this and we're going to feel our way through it. Uh, and so that kind of puts a different angle on it. Uh, and then I'm sure I, we're going to have a disclaimer. Doug and I try very hard to keep this family friendly. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will not be family friendly only because of, uh, I'm sure a couple of those guys will be drinking, uh, <laughs> So it'll make it interesting for sure. We'll, we'll have disclaimers on that. It won't be our normal programming by any means. We're going to give it a shot. I don't know what it'll even be like to listen to. Uh, we're going to try to cater yeah, yeah. to you. If you want to listen to it, you know, that's fine. Uh, we'll try to keep it at our hour cap and then break it up if we have to. If it's a long run. Uh, we're not big on like, we're not a long form podcast. So we want to keep it right at around an hour. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to have visuals. So if you wanted to watch it, uh, we're going to try to, you know, maps and try to make it more immersive for everybody since they're new. So that's what we've been working on. And we're trying to figure that out. What's the most effective way of doing this. And again, a lot of the people that are going to play the remote come like this. Uh, so we're trying to figure out the technology layer, how to deliver the game. And then on top of that, how do we deliver the game uh, in a way that's consumable by somebody who's never done it before and is new. So if you've never done D and D, this would be a good introduction to it. Cause guess what? We're learning too. We're not experts by any means. And that's what makes what we're going to do different, in my opinion, that would be my pitch is that this is newbies trying their hand at it. So. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to need your help. Uh, I think I can cover the video aspect of whether you're looking at my role, digital or otherwise, looking at my character sheet. And uh, for those of you that don't really know, once we get into this, we're going to explain everything. It's kind of going to be a how to from noobs, but also learning at the same time that you're listening so yeah and as a thousand foot flyby it is a if you're not unaware it's a board game and it relies heavily on dice in order to determine probability so there's always a there's a story and everybody has a character and essentially the way that it works is you can do anything um within the confines of the story but yeah. everything you decide to do is tied to a die to a, di a roll of the dice yeah. like you can do anything but to determine its success or failure or just cause and effect, you got to roll a dice and you have to hit a certain number target. It's that simple. That's the game right there. Yeah. It's there's not much more to it than that. And yeah, there's a whole fictional world tied to it, but that's really the game mechanic. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You talk about dice. I was uh, explaining this to my mother and stepfather last night. I said, you use a D20 or a 20 sided dice. And my stepfather looked at me like I was crazy. Uh, 20 sided dice, uh, like it doesn't exist, but, uh, he is definitely not a nerd, um, kind of old school. <laughs> so getting going to ask you, how, how's that, how's that going for you? Uh, not good. <laughs> my, my mother, I know listens. Uh, thank you very much for the subscribe there. Uh, she's a little bit nerdy just to support her children. <laughs> she has to be so trying to explain the 20 sided dice and what that means to him yeah. uh was comical yeah. i threw an image up there for those of you on video yeah. just so you can see what but you know it's funny is there's a stigma to to D, &D. uh number one it's considered really geeky and nerdy but now it's mainstream because a lot of things like like you mentioned stranger things and stuff like yeah. that uh, but then you have the whole thing like um uh there was the whole thing in the 80s the satanic panic where uh, and I've, there's tons of documentaries I watched on this cause it's fascinating to where they were blaming Dungeons and Dragons on everything from, you know, uh, mass murders to satanic rituals to, uh, school shootings, you know, and things like that. So 
it, it's kind of it reminds me of the video game Doom. Doom gets blamed for so many things that bad that happen in society. You know, if the if somebody shoots up a school, they they well, he was playing Doom. You know, back in the back in the eighties, right? And uh, back in the sorry, back in the nineties, school shootings didn't really get popular. I guess till Columbine, unfortunately. Uh, but there are certain things in pop culture that get blamed, whether it's scary movies or action movies for you know violence. D and D is one of those things, um, and it's kind of gotten a bad rap. And so you know, it, it's 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 got a, a long history to it because it's been around forever. So. But uh, I just thought it was interesting when Joe pitched the idea to us. He's like, would you be interested? And I was like, you know, Doug just said he wanted to get into it. So prime opportunity. So. All righty. I think we're going to wrap this bad boy up. We want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, we hope that uh, everybody has an awesome new year. And we appreciate you. Uh, just being consistent and hopefully this year we'll have some variety and we will be talking to you all very, very soon. So take care.